the South African lineups. Andre Aronsa in goal, the top choice for number one. Plays his club ball at Fulham in England with Kevin. Also playing in England, Mark Fish, number five. He was a member of the FIFA World 11 in 96. Dr. Kamalo, very familiar to American soccer fans. He toils with the Columbus crew. Eric Tinkler will play his 50th game, the most ever for a South African player. Today's game against Brazil. Defensive lineup, five defense. And they reunite as the diabolical duo, as they're called in Brazil. Number seven, Bebeto, and the great goal scorer, scorer Romario. Look at the number eight between them, Dunga. This is the man that makes the motor run. Quite a lineup, even if they do not have their full team out there. As we talked about earlier, what a choice it is for Mario Zagallo, the head coach for Brazil. Tasikwe is the referee, and Lozu Dintwe, all from Bafuda Swana, the fourth official today. A local from South Africa, and you can see the South Africans wearing their traditional white shorts and the striped brown and yellow jerseys moving from the right to the left here in half number one. Brazil, the blue and white, will be attacking the goal to the right. Rather warm conditions in this summer in South Africa, and the field still a little damp. An hour-long downpour struck Johannesburg about three hours before kickoff. And the conditions are wet. Zay Maria, the right back, but expect to see him push up as he did in the Asian stop on the Nike World Tour as he helped set up Sonny Anderson and Flavio Conceição for two key goals in their stops in Korea and Japan. Pulling it down, laying it to the side, Eric Tinkler. Here's a chance for Motown. Gets to the end line, but cannot get the cross in. It'll be a throw in deep through South Africa. Motown will be patrolling the right. On the left, Willem Jackson. In the middle, the sweeper today, Neil Tolby, and the two center backs, the familiar face of Mark Fish, ex of Lazio, now with Bolton Wanderers. And the number 19, the captain, Lucas Redevi. So five men back. Kamalo among those up top, and putting instant pressure. On the Brazilian net, Phil Masinga keeping it in play. Double teamed. And the ball finally pulled away by the blue-clad Brazilians. Masinga, a very tall and powerful central striker, a target man. He was responsible for the goal that brought South Africa to qualification in the France World Cup 98. Nice try by Dunga. Outside of the foot pass, though, however, picked up by Fish. One of the world all-stars last year. At the Meadowlands against the Brazilian Olympians. So, not the first time he has gone head to head with Roberto Carlos and some of the others on the field today. South Africa doing well here to establish some possession, get the crowd into the game a little bit. You have to fear the Brazilian counterattack. So, as long as you have the ball, you don't have to worry about Bebeto Romario coming straight at the heart of your defense. There was some displeasure with the choice of lineup that Clive Barker put on the field. Mentioned they were talking initially about putting Sean Bartlett. Now on loan back to his native Cape Town Spurs. There's Neil Tovey, the former captain of South Africa. Rodevi has taken over that role, and he's starring with Leeds United in the English Premier League. But the defensive posture of the South African team Put on the field by Clive Barker. Phil Masinga playing as the lone forward in this setup. Trying to get the ball to the big man. Moetti to the outside. Rotang the cross. Back goes Dita. Little problem for the big man. Participating recently in the Super Cup. Having a little bit more luck here. We see the buildup coming from the right flank for South Africa. The high ball towards the back post. And Masinga very powerful in the air, but he could not get to that one. Zay Maria, as we mentioned, pushing forward from that right back position. And the hard tackle by Moshueo, knocking it out. Corner kick upcoming. Aronsa, long time. Professional in the South African ranks, called up by Kevin Keegan now to play at Fulham as they try and make their quest from the second division up to the Premier League. 
Bending it back post. The header over the bar. Chance there by Denilson. So look at Romario. In swinging corner kick for Brazil. Again towards that back post. Heading underneath it. Denilson to Romario. That note of Club Valencia will probably change in the very near future. Although they have changed the board in Valencia. Maybe they can convince him to come back to Spain. But he has expressed a desire to return to Brazil, be closer to Zagallo, and try and continue his quest for another World Cup championship. And Romario's problems as much off the field as on the field. He says he can't score goals unless he's been out carousing the night before the match. Dunga laying it off. Sampaio to the far side. Have not seen much of Babeto yet. As he shows towards the center circle. Romario with the ball. Now pressured from behind by Masinga. Long ball up front for Zay Maria. He's the fullback. But offside in a free kick. Get used to that. Brazil always known for their attacking defenders. You'll find their especially wing defenders far up the field. And this time Romario deep at midfield to collect the ball and send it long into the corner to Zay Maria. Tinkler. Masinga flipping it on. Hard tackle. There'll be a throw in. As Dunga knocking it off his South African counterpart at the last moment. Luetti going in hard. Move up 10 yards and try it again. There's Bebeto. Some question about Bebeto because of his age, whether in fact he still has what it takes to score on the world stage and be a part of the Brazil World Cup squad that will try to defend. Their 94 championship. Remember, the World Cup is only held every four years. Luetti heading it out of play. Obviously, a lot of attention going towards Romario at the moment. There's Dunga. The great Dunga, the battler at midfield, the ball winner for the Brazilians, and still wearing the captain's armband as he did in 94. Rodrigo taken down, one of the newcomers. Seven international players, either through injury or club commitments, unavailable for Zagallo for this game. Because of that, had to go back to Brazil, call up some club players, fill out the roster, and in fact, only three field substitutes are on the bench. Now, when you talk about Brazil, you always have to mention their depth at every position. But when you're missing players like Leonardo, Juninho, Emerson. Ending at far post and it will spin out of play. Bobeto could not get there in time. Also missing Roberto Carlos of Real Madrid. The great free kick specialist. How about the ball he hit against France in the Tournoi de France? Must have bent completely around the corner of the wall. Mark Fish in the center circle. The foul called against the South Africans and it will be a free kick. Already the 30 year old from Orlando Pirates and in fact looks like they might spin this around the other way and Moetti being introduced to the ball by Dungu says this is what you're supposed to try and kick. As the Silver Fox Zagallo watches on Zagallo a part of all four Brazilian world championships going back to 1958 and 62 as a player at Mark Fish reaching through it looks to be a pretty fair collision. Zé Roberto coming up. Nice move. Hard tackle. That again. Rodrigo. Near side, Redevi wearing the captain's armband. Have not been able to get the ball to Dr. Kumalo much as the Brazilians have shut him down. Tinkler strips. Bebeto. Romario in the middle stops the run. The pass deflected away. Drop it back for a corner kick. Danielson, the new richest transfer in the world. 
transfer in waiting in fact until after the World Cup at this point still part of the roster at Sao Paulo and only 19 years of age so a tremendous career awaits Danielson already wearing the number 10 for Brazil and that says a lot Roberto, the in swinger Aronsa punches it away gathered by Brazil there's Danielson again lifting it through nice play by the South African keeper Danielson though and this tells you the wealth of riches that Brazil has admitted this week that he's not even sure if he's going to have a spot on the World Cup roster might be the most wanted player in the world but Zagallo has choices nice layoff top of the box picked up by Tinkler and pushing forward And Brazil has always seemed to have such a wealth of left-sided players. Additionally, when you think of Jorginho and Zinho, players that can come from that left side. Dijalminha, also not a part of the squad this time because he's uh, a bit of a hothead, apparently. Zagallo doesn't want to take that sort of risk. The big story of Edmundo not being a part of this Brazilian selection, despite leading the Brazilian professional league in scoring. Kamalo. A rare touch. If South Africa is to do anything today, they need to get Kamalo involved. Just over 10 minutes gone, and here's a chance on the break. They beat the trap. Aronsa comes out. The chip in the corner. It's a goal for Brazil. Romario, perfect timing. South Africa caught napping in the back. And Bobeto and Romario strike. It's 1-0 Brazil. A perfectly timed run pays off for Romario and wherever Brazil plays it's a festival and normally a festival of goals a good early ball out of the back and it's to Bebeto Bebeto puts the ball early into Romario before he stepped in behind the last defender so he's onside you'll see him making his break the ball played as it's played Mark Fish hoping to step up and put Romario offside Romario, though, had run from deep enough, and Bebeto delivered the ball quickly enough to keep him onside. And how about the coolness in finishing by the great Romario as he just lifts it over Arense, the South African goalkeeper, and nestles it into the empty net. You cannot fault Arense for that one. He came out of the net to try and put pressure on Romario, but that man has seen a ton of pressure. The leading goal scorer in the last World Cup, and many thought his international career was over, but he is proving to have found the fountain of youth another chance on the break the outside and Nilsson the shot and it almost splits the legs of Arensa. seems as though someone just turned off the snooze alarm as Brazil has woken up here in the last couple of minutes oh what a flick Bebeto again Zé Maria near side headed away but back to the center Brazil closing up fourth goal for Romario in this Brazil world tour of course the Performance he put on the field at the Orange Bowl against Mexico is one that he will always remember. How about that goal he took out of the air from the top of the arc and blasted it, still rising into the top of the net. Everyone coming to see the great Ronaldo and Romario showing there's still a few lessons to be learned from the master. Motown, back to the middle. South Africa has to keep composed here, Ty. Jackson, nice chip. But offside, the flag comes up and the kick goes down. UEFA Champions League action coming your way on Wednesday. Del Piero and Juventus against Man U. People have been talking about the problems that British squads have had in Europe in the past. Man United seems to have found the answer this year as they have put together a string of solid performances. And taking on Juventus, one of the top teams in the world, a finalist last year. Might be a little bit too much. Keep it tuned to ESPN. Well, Romario and Bebeto look like they've picked up just where they left off during the 94 World Cup. Well, their goal scoring exploits and their ability to combine in the attack led Brazil to their fourth. World Cup Championship unprecedented 58 62 70 and 94 chance for South Africa at the top of the box nice layoff but intercepted and Dunga turning it back the other way Zay Maria the quick ball down the corner Bebeto giving chase 
The captain Redebi gets there first. Fourteen minutes gone. The goal three minutes ago. As the nice ball from the back looked like it might have been Dunga finding Bebeto. Well, it's funny that both Bebeto and Romario disappeared from the Brazilian national team for nearly two years at the conclusion of World Cup 94. They were no longer being selected. As we mentioned, Romario was having problems off the field and bouncing back and forth between the Spanish first division and Brazil. Long ball, but too long. It will go out for a goal kick. And Bebeto appeared to have been phased out because of his age. Now he's back alongside his attacking partner of Romario, number 11 for Brazil. Already a goal today on the break that Bebeto set up. Where will Romario appear next in the world of club soccer? Wherever they have clubs that close late, apparently. And beaches. He tends to gravitate towards that as well. And the Brazilian should. Many of these Brazilians learned their soccer alongside the waves. South Africa trying to control the midfield, and they do have five defenders and four in the midfield, but Brazil picks this one off. Nice chip to the outside, but it bounced too far for Rodrigo, and it will go out for the South African throw. Brazil quoted as three to one favorites to take the World Cup in France in June and July of 98. South Africa 75 to one. USA 50 to one. Jackson, 25 year old back from Orlando Pirates. One of the big clubs as he tries to keep it in play down the near side. One of the more historic clubs. In South Africa, of course, Kaiser Chiefs. Jomo Cosmos, uh, quite a North American connection to those two teams, Ty. Kaiser Chiefs, in fact, named after the old Atlanta Chiefs, where Kaiser Mautong scored the winning goal in the 1967 championship back in the old NASL. Jomo Sono used to play for Toronto in the Cosmos, went back home, used his money, bought Highland Park one of the smaller clubs and turn that into a recent power. Of course Orlando Cape Town and the Kaiser Chiefs probably the most the three most famous. You may as well mention Ace Nesselenkwe another South African who starred in the North American Soccer League. Jose Maria getting called for the late tackle there. And now Sean Bartlett of course and Dr. Kumalo playing in Major League Soccer. Sean Bartlett with the Metro Stars. Kamala with the Columbus Crew. The pass to Kamala. Off of Toby out of play. And they'll say it actually touched Jose Maria at the last moment. You can see it looks like they've put Neil Toby a little bit more to the outside. Started to push up Willem Jackson. They realize a goal down. And considering the fact this is just a friendly for all intents and purposes. Try and put some entertainment on the fans. And they do finally get a shot on Dito's net. But in perfect position and little power on it. Phil, it cannot be overestimated the unifying effect that this team's success, the South African team's success, has had on the politics and the people of South Africa. Toby scored a goal in the African Nations Cup, and they nicknamed him Mandala, even though he's white. Offside is the deflection coming off the defender. Danielson robbed on that one, perhaps. Bafana, Bafana. They are the boys indeed, and they have helped unite. Right. Zulu language term, Bafana Bafana, the boys. And they have been embraced by the entire South African population. Apartheid, a thing of the past, at least in the sporting world. Dunga, the pressure on Jackson. Throw in South Africa just in front of their own bench. Dunga continuing to play for Jubilo Iwata in Japan. In fact, he was perhaps more surprised than anyone to get called back by Zagallo as he thought he was playing out the string, but he was one of the more integral parts of that championship last time and has proved to be a stabilizing force in the midfield this time around. 
You can never question Dunga's commitment and battling spirit at midfield, but at 34 years of age, Zagallo should wonder, perhaps, whether Dunga is the man to lead the midfield for Brazil. One player mentioned with Bayer Leverkusen is Emerson. He was not made available because of club commitments, but he might have played for Dunga today. Backfield flick. Looking for Rodrigo in the corner from Romario. The magic light is on, even though that one goes out of play. The Brazilians just ooze skill, don't they? And flair. I guess it's not flash if it works. Artistry. Nearing the 20-minute mark. They paint with a big brush. Mm -hmm. Also known as the Jogo Bonito, the beautiful game. The Brazilians are renowned for it. They don't strike a ball. They don't knock it around. They caress the ball around the field. And it is interesting, even though they did win their fourth world championship, the only team to do so, Carlos Alberto Pereira, maybe not condemned, but criticized heavily for the way in which they did it. And even though he was his assistant at the time, Mario Zagallo has said they will not play that way anymore. He knows that they do need to hold on to leads at times and play conservatively at times, but he wants to see, as you said, the beautiful game. Well, the big lesson, though, was from the 1982 World Cup where Brazil was loaded with talent more than any other team at that particular tournament, but still fell to Italy in the second round due to the fact that they were putting on too much of a show. They lacked some discipline. Carlos Alberto Pereira injected some discipline into the Brazilian squad. They may not have played quite as attractively, but it was a more realistic approach, and it did bring them their fourth world championship after having not won one since 1970. Pesuero. Actually, Radevi pushing it forward. Kumalo on the spin. Nice hold on as Dunga challenges, tries to bend the shot for the upper corner, but it sails just wide. Nice touch of skill from the doctor. Kamala showing strength on the ball as well as outstanding balance to ride the challenge here from Dunga. Now the shot. Now this had a strange effect on it. I think he missed hit it. But it was enough perhaps to fool Dida in goal for Brazil. Tafarel still a part of the picture for the Brazilian national team. Zagallo still tends to go with Tafarel in the big matches. Tafarel has been out of form as of late in Brazil. Indeed, only 24 years of age, most likely has stamped the goalkeeper of the future on his resume. Recently coming off that long trip from Japan. Part of Cruzeiro's attempt to win the club championship. Here's a chance for South Africa in the box. Still loose. The whistle blows. Came from the stands, though. Play on. Back heel for Kumalo. Kumalo. Still holding, looking for help, lays it across the middle. He had a chance to shoot there. Great setup by Masinga on the heel pass to get Kamalo into position. Zay Roberto. This whistle came from the field, and it will be a foul. Zay Roberto. Is number six, but not quite Roberto Carlos on that one. Number two for Brazil, Zay Maria. Playing right back, he spent more time in the South Africa end of the field than he has in his own end of the field. Mark Fish, part of Bolton's attempt to stay up at the Premier League. Act interesting, Barnsley also going to a South African and Eric Tinkler. Two of the newcomers. Oshwayo could not keep that one in play. Thirty-one-year-old plays his ball in Turkey. South Africa played three weeks ago against Germany in Germany, losing 3-0. They'd like to improve upon that performance as they take on some of the world heavyweights. No question, Germany also one of the favorites for the World Cup in France this coming summer. Of course, also remember that it was just a year ago that these two teams met on the field of play a game that South Africa actually led to nothing if I recall only to see Brazil come back for a 3 2 victory and Andre Aronsa the South African keeper points to that game perhaps more than any other as one of the inspirations for their efforts nice ball Masinga tries to lift but can't keep it in play big man got there but he could not keep that one in 
It was in the 11th minute, some 12 minutes ago, that Brazil breaking free from the back and a nice layoff from Bebeto. The coordination there between Bebeto and Romario and the flawless finish by Romario going at nearly full pace, casually lifting the ball over the goalkeeper. That's tough to do, to chip at full speed like that. But the skill is certainly there. He's shown us a few other flashes of brilliance besides that goal, Romario. Bebeto showing, dropping it back, Jose Maria. Rodrigo tripped up in the center circle, but play on. Nice through ball. Chance one on one. Can they keep it in play inside the box? And the answer is no. Ushuaia denied. Brazil trying to clear the area. Zé Roberto blasts it forward with the left. Still in play. Fish up the line. Ushuaia. Touched out of play. And it'll be a throw in for South Africa. Champions League action. Check your local listings for details. But Bayer Leverkusen. Getting a chance to take on Monaco. Again, that's on Wednesday. Check your local listings for details. Mark Fish whistled for the foul as Danielson sent packing. And Leverkusen, the former team of American midfield general Claudio Reyna, who's now moved on to Wolfsburg very successfully. There's Fish. He's out of the play. A little tug at Danielson. Hardly noticeable. Danielson made it look much worse than it actually was. Fish, one of the first of the new breed of international superstars from South Africa. Bill Shane, Ty Keo with you as the Nike Brazil World Tour hits South Africa, Johannesburg's Ellis Park Stadium, filled to capacity. Watching the world champions and Romario, the golden boot from 94, looking to prove his worth for World Cup 98. South Africa. Wearing the white shorts and tan and yellow jerseys, moving from the right to the left in the blue and white of Brazil, attacking from the left. The headlines in Brazil after the World Cup draw, speaking about the Brazil group, they named the three countries that Brazil will face, Scotland, Morocco, and Norway, as the first three victims. Plenty of confidence in the Brazilian camp. Zagallo says they respect everyone, but they fear no one. And they shouldn't with the depth that they possess. The one point you make, though, is the fact that if the team starts to consider those the three first victims, could be a little dangerous. But Zagallo's been around a long time and hoisted a number of cups, and I don't think he'll let this team fall into that trap. Zagallo was one, once asked by the media if he was in a bad mood because he wasn't cooperating. Because he said yes. He goes, I was in a bad mood in 58, in 62, <laughs> in 70, and 94 as well. And the Brazilian coach, Mario Zagallo, there's only one other man that has won the World Cup both as a player and as a coach, and that's Franz Beckenbauer. Nice teamwork between Masinga and Kamalo. Masinga laying it through. Kamalo in the box. The back heel to the middle, and it's cleared away by Sampaio. Cesar Sampaio saving the day briefly. Here's Fish pushing up from the defense. Nice cut. Chip back for Fish, and it's headed away. This time, Rodrigo forced to clear it back to midfield, and some flair from the doctor and Masinga almost creating a chance. Nice move. Cross to the middle. Well, South, the Africa, South Africa taking a page from the Brazilian game plan, bringing their wide defenders into the attack, getting making some progress down the flanks getting those crosses into the box and Masinga very tall target player he may have a chance to get on the end of one of those say Roberto near side looking for Romario who's looking to bring it down in the full volley Redevi heading it clear and a throw in for Brazil Lucas Redevi playing for George Graham at Leeds United had to make the long trip back from England after a game just last night. Masinga had been at Leeds with him, recently moved to Bari of the Italian Serie A. There's a chance. Blasted away by Romario, and it almost hops through. Might have been deflected. Brazil appeals for a corner, and yes, it will be. There's Mario Zagallo and that elite crew with Franz Beckenbauer. Clive Barker. 
a good player in his day in South Africa. His playing career curtailed by injury. Very flamboyant personality in Clive Barker. Arantza could not get there before Sampaio did, and it was headed away by the central defender. Here's Bebeto again. He looks for Romario. Romario has some space there, and he usually does better with it, but it doesn't take much for him to get the shot in. Some good defending there, in fact, by South Africa to close Romario down quickly before he could strike, because he strikes with the hair trigger. It doesn't take much time or space for him to get the shot on target. Looks like Fish might have taken a nick, and in fact, probably on Sampaio's header, a collision. Getting checked out. So South Africa will play a man down while Mark Fish is attended to. Dunga pushing it forward. Romario can't control. Thirty minutes gone here in half number one. The lone tally, Romario's goal in the eleventh minute. Well, South Africa has had some pretty good chances here of late. Romalo and Masinga pushing forward as they put on a show for the home folks. Fish all patched up and set to check back in. And the South African crowd, you see a full stadium in Johannesburg, and this is their traditional rugby ground where they've been world champions. The Nike World Tour going there because of the large TV screens available to them. Breaking through to Nielsen. Perhaps one of the most gifted young players they have produced in a while in his past. Dead on target to Rodrigo. The hard tackle by Redevi. No foul is called. But to Nielsen just threading the needle. The South African crowd chanting Shoshiloza, which from the mining camps meant to pull your weight, work harder. Oh, here's a bad play, but the flag comes up. Almost allowing Bebeto to come through unmarked. Bebeto at 33 years of age. Some question whether he really will stay in the plans of Mario Zagallo. But if he links up as well as he has thus far with Romario, he may work his way back in the lineup. Challenge there a bit questionable from behind for South, South Africa, but no call there. Ushuaia pressured all the way over from the left side by Zé Roberto. Here's the chip in looking for Masinga. Typical Brazilian fashion, a defender under pressure there. Still keeps possession using a skillful little chest pass. Ushuaia, the 31-year-old, cross to the middle, and you can see while Masinga towers over the Brazilians, there are three between him and the ball. And that's one of the dangers that Clive Barker faced when he decided to go with just one forward. Exactly, Masinga all alone up there. Every now and then you see Kamalo in support. He runs alone up front, and it makes it very easy for the Brazilian defenders to concentrate their efforts on closing him down. Near side, Redevi gets the return pass. South Africa feeling around as Brazil does in many cases for a soft spot, and there really aren't many. Fish with time on his hands as Brazil has dropped back as the first half. Less than 13 minutes to go. I guess there may have been some question also about Romario because he was not in the Brazilian team for a couple of years there after 94 and now he's 31 years of age. Masinga comes back lays it off the return pass avoids the tackle of Zay Maria. Pomalo in the middle still Masinga. Good little step over by Masinga as he was pressured by two. Chance for a shot. The blast towards the upper corner goes high. Good effort by Mashuayo who has come over from the right side and found some space on the left and that draws a round of applause. Decent approach work and good individual efforts here especially by Masinga. Masinga has that flair and great skill for a big man. Some space here. Brazil not doing as good a job perhaps as they should. It pressuring that close to their goal. You could see the Bushuayo and Kumalo on his earlier attempt both going for that upper corner against Dita and considering he hovers near six foot four it's not going to be easy to get the ball past him. 
As it's you mentioned, Phil Dita with Crusader, who lost to Borussia Dortmund in the World Club Championship in Tokyo. And Jovan Karofsky, the young American, but what used to be considered a goal-scoring target player, now playing wide and did play some minutes for Dortmund in their World Club Championship in which they beat Crusader. Nice header flicked in. Fish had been pushing up into the box. Chipping it back far side. Jackson over Kumalo. It will hop across the end line and a goal kick, but a nice try, says the doctor. Real Madrid against Portugal's FC Porto. This one for our international viewers only. Wednesday, check your local listings for details as Champions League action heats up. Talked about the World Club Championship. A little controversy on Cruzeiro. Nebio Scali, the head coach who replaced Omar Hitchfeld on the Borussia Dortmund bench. Not happy with the way Cruzeiro rented players. Bebeto being one of them on 20-day contracts. The ball to the middle. Looking for Bebeto Aromario. Headed away. Another one of those chest passes, as you mentioned. Dunga, every time he touches, seems to take a boot in the back. Of course, a big story here today for Brazil, the absence of Ronaldo, considered by most, if not everyone, to be the world's top player currently. Not released by his club team, Inter Milan, because of big matches that they are involved in this week. Ronaldo was not that happy with it, not for the fact that he could not come here, but it has not been the first as the hard tackle from the middle sails wide by Junior Viano, but it's Ronaldo always said it was time for something to happen. And he urged FIFA to take action to try and, I guess, compromise in this club versus country situation. It's a constant tug of war. Attempted move to the middle, and then Ilsen was held up. Could be close cause for a yellow card, but it will stay in pocket as Moetti lost the ball and made sure that there would not be a push forward by Danielson. Danielson winning the ball and then held <laughs> very obviously. And nearly roped. Alicio Sasique could have been well within his rights to pull out the card. But it is just a friendly. And nine minutes left to go in the first half. Brazil continues to lead 1-0. There has not been much injury time to this particular point. Mark Fish needed some attention for a cut on the chin. But play continued. You can see South Africa has actually had the better of possession. But Brazil has had the better chances. Chip forward. Heading it across, and it's picked off by Sampaio. Phil Masinga couldn't get to that one. Masinga responsible for four vital goals for South Africa in World Cup qualifying, including the one that put them through in the 1-0 victory over Congo. And what a goal it was. Nice move to the middle, looking for Omario. The rebound on the volley sails wide. Dunga, one of the tougher characters in the world game. Takes a crack from outside the box. Only partially cleared here by South Africa. Dunga does well. He keeps it down through some traffic. Had it actually been on target, Lorenzo might not have seen it. Zay Maria at Parma, one of his teammates. Hernan Crespo, who he will be tooth and nails against in the upcoming World Cup. In fact, might be not be a bad matchup in the semifinals or final to see Brazil against Argentina, two of the favorites. Although, their work cut out for them. We talk about South Africa in their first, but not too many teams have won on foreign soil. Nice play. Bebeto still on the ball. Tucks it past Arensa. The second effort pays off. Another goal for Brazil, and Bebeto showing some strength as well has patience and a big hug instantly from Romario to Bebeto. Now they've had their differences in the past, but they've also had a great deal of success, including the World Championship in 94 when they created practically all of the goals for the Brazilian squad. Bebeto, look at the heel ball from Romario. So it's again that those two players combining and you couldn't put better placement on the ball. Watch this. Gets the defense going completely the wrong way. Bebeto a little bit lucky here to pop out with the ball again, but he knows exactly what to do with it, and that is to lodge it in the far side netting, well out of the reach of Arense. The 
hard tackle. And here's the chance of the follow up. You mentioned the back heel flick from Romario, but it was good defense by Lucas Radebi, the captain, who came in and did get the ball and pressured Bebeto. It was amazing. Bebeto Redebi. kept his feet, let alone possession. Radebi unlucky that the ball popped right back to Bebeto because he did make a good challenge. Mentioned the fact that South Africa had their chances and almost beat Brazil last year, and it's apparent that the Brazilians have a long memory. Bebeto's memory appears to be a little cloudy at the moment, maybe knocked a, a little woozy by that hard tackle, but maintained composure enough to bury the ball past Arenza, and it is 2-0 Brazil. You think Ronaldo's worried about his spot? I don't think so. <laughs> Although Bebeto, with a goal and an assist today, teaming up well with Romario. They have a great understanding. There's no question. It's been very evident, even on some of the plays that did not result in goals. This one might to the middle. Oh, what a play. Dunga denied. Bebeto still on the ball. Actually, that was Rodrigo on the full volley. There's Dunga trying the outside of the right. And Arnza unhappy, to say the least, with his defense in front of him. But Bebeto, the delicate little chip. And Dunga, not exactly a Gerson or a Rivellino or a Zico, but he does the work in midfield and, and can threaten, although his shots have been off today. The Nike Brazil World Tour at Ellis Park Stadium sold out. Romario 11 minutes in and Bebeto seven minutes from time in the first half. Phil Shane, Ty Keogh with you on ESPN as we continue our coverage of the Nike Brazil World Tour. And that has been a recent criticism of Brazilian teams despite their success. A lack of a really creative midfield general, a la Socrates, a la Gerson, who I just mentioned. Uh, it's just not quite there. Dunga does a lot of great work, but he doesn't have that fluidity. Nice chance. Another cutback. The blast to the corner, and it's pushed away. Willem Jackson. Knocking it back, Redebi holding on the chip. Jackson's header cleared high in the air by Junior Viano. Not far enough. Near side, Moshoyo looking for Masinga. That might be the best chance that South Africa has had all game, and they have had their share. It's just that when they get close, they've just missed, and when Brazil gets close, they don't. South Africa definitely has not been outclassed. But in the final third, as they approach the Brazil goal, they don't seem to be able to open things up, whereas Brazil, each time they break, they look very dangerous. Nice dummy by Jackson to keep it in play. Mushuayo coming over to help out. Coming in hard, Cesar Sampaio. Still in play. They'll blow the whistle here, even though South Africa might have had the advantage, and it will be a free kick as Kamalo was brought down by Rodrigo. Dida setting up the defense. Masinga got his toe to it into Kumalo. Kumalo then brought down, hooked from behind by Rodrigo. There's Kumalo lining up the kick. Very gifted right foot to the far side. Toby fights the ball free, but straight to Dida's arms as no one cut to the run. Pretty clean game for the most part. There have been a few hard fouls, and there another collision. Moetti, the 30-year-old defend, defensive midfielder from Orlando Pirates, stepping in. Just a couple minutes left, plus added time here in half number one. And quite a show for the packed house from the world champions. Quite a resume put on the field by Bebeto today as he continues his efforts to try and get back Rodrigo, one of the youngsters, tripped up. Showing great speed there and acceleration. But a nice tackle from Moetti. Good cut, near side. Jackson pressured. Moshuel. Earrings glistening in the light. South African fans want a goal before the halftime whistle. Sizwe Matwang. Gets the return pass and a nice delayed give and go. Masinga in the middle. The ball deflected. Header going wide. Might have been a bump on the back from the defense. Junior Baiano defending there for Brazil. Appeared to put his forearm 
into the South African attacker. There's Clive Barker and now Mario Zagallo, the Brazilian brain trust. Assistant coach in 94 for Carlos Alberto Pereira. Take a look and listen to Edmundo and Bebeto, two players trying to get a call back for the France 98 squad, plus highlights of this first half, all that coming up at the half. Edmundo, the leading scorer in Brazil at the moment, 28 goals as he continues to break record after record, including a hat trick at Flamenco in his last timeout. But yet to get a callback from Mario Zagallo. Zagallo has so many other options. Also missing from today's lineup for Brazil, Cafu, Roberto Carlos, Emerson, Juninho, Leonardo. And other players who have had rare call-ups, if any at all, the Sonny Andersons and Giovanni Elbers of the world. We mentioned Emerson and his injury, keeping him in Germany. You could almost take their second team and win a world championship. Hard tackle. Toby stepping forward. Ball to the middle. Open the header straight into the arms of Dita. Rosuelo could not get enough on that one. One of my favorite players from the 94 World Cup, Mauro Silva, having his troubles getting back into the Brazilian squad. In fact, Flavio Conceição, who's not here either today because of club commitments, could be the heir apparent to that defensive midfield role that Mauro Silva played to a T in that championship run in 94. Camalo chipping to Jackson in the corner. Nice cut, gets the cross, back post. Masinga's there, but sandwiched between two blue jerseys. Headed and cleaned, or having his clock cleaned. Looked like that might have been Mushueo. The foul will be called. The second whistle actually does not blow. Time coming to a close here in half number one. As Romario celebrates a goal and an assist for the diabolical duo. Romario and Bebeto both teaming up on the scoreboard today. And at the half, it is 2-0 Brazil. What will the second half have in store? Much of the same from Brazil, not too many subs. But as far as South Africa, still some offense on the bench. And they have held their own, just need to crack the net behind Dita in half number two. Again, the look at Edmundo and Bebeto and halftime highlights. All coming your way next, it's Brazil 2, South Africa nothing on ESPN. Alice Park, Nike's Brazil World Tour continues, and Brazil putting on a show. Oh, well, there's not many changes available, only four subs on the bench, as seven international players were either refused their release or injured to the point where they could not be released. Several of those players will join Brazil in their next stop in the King Fod Tournament with the Romario and Bebeto show going on in the first half of play. Brazil appears to hardly miss the great Ronaldo, not made available by Inter Milan, his club squad. And for Brazil, this is their only preparation matches. They did not have to qualify for World Cup 98, being the defending champions. So they take these games pretty seriously. Bebeto really making a play to get back in the squad with his performance thus far in this match. The age of 33, I think from that close-up, you can see why they call him Bebeto. Dunga Danielson, who still looks like he maybe just crawled out of the crib himself. Well, he's only 19. Straight into a $21 million transfer. Phil Shane, Ty Keo with you as they'll switch sides. Brazil, wearing the blue and white, will move from right to left. The brown and tan. And green as South Africa have switched shorts to start the second half. The break coming in the middle. Romario whiffs on the shot. How often do you see that? Near side to Nielsen. Maybe Romario didn't go out last night. Zé Roberto. Romario dummies the ball free. Works its way through the entire South African defense before being cleared. South Africa started the game in white shorts as Brazil is wearing. The referee probably had a few things to say about that. Regardless, they'll attack from the left to the right. Far side, Zay Maria, whose runs forward were curtailed in the latter part of the first half, but not now. With space to burn. Aronsa cannot get there. The shot off the crossbar. Romario might have just tucked it in. Brazil immediately threatening from the kickoff. It might have been Danielson, but he caught the underside of the crossbar. It was Danielson on the rebound. 
And what a play by Zay Maria tucking a lethal cross in with enough pace to get past Aronson. What a thrill and perhaps a predictor of a future for number 10 for Brazil. Then Ilson, 19 years of age, already wearing that fabled jersey previously worn by Pele, by Rivellino, by Zico. The inside left. And he does fit that role to a T. Ronaldo's familiar number nine worn by Rodrigo in this game. As the referee, Lucio Sisique, wants to make sure he has a few words with John Moetti before they restart play. Two minutes into the second half, and we were, oh, maybe an inch or two away from a 3-0 Brazil lead. The free kick, some 35 yards away. No Roberto Carlos in sight. But Dunga, who has tried to get that right foot bend on track, lining up, and he'll blast this one through, and on a one-hop bounce, the hard shot straight into Aronson's arms. A real British connection in the South Africa squad. Mark Fish plays at Bolton. Ladebi, the captain, plays for Leeds in the English Premier League. Tinkler has been involved with Barnsley. Masinga was with Leeds before moving to Bari. Here's the long range. Look at the dip on this ball. And remember, there are some wet conditions out there. There was a huge thunderstorm hitting Johannesburg about three and a half hours before kickoff. Hard tackle by Tinkler, but the Nielsen runs through like it wasn't even there, lays it off for Romario, who got a slightly late start. And it is summertime in the Southern Hemisphere. South Africa, warm conditions, something that the Brazilian players, except for the ones that have recently been playing in Europe, Brazilian players should be accustomed to it. Headed back. Near side, Latam, who was pushed forward from that right back position. Back post, Masinga gets, a, gets ahead to it, but cannot head the ball down. Sails over the bar and a goal kick. Here's Zay Maria's cross. That early chance for Brazil just after the kickoff of the second half in there. And Romario and Danielson getting his left foot to it, but getting just under it as the net was momentarily unattended as Arenze had come out and not made contact with the ball. Rodebi expecting Zay Maria to pull the ball back, but he did not. Instead, whipped a wicked cross through. Fish gives the ball up. A rare circumstance there. Roberto or Romario almost picks it off, and Rodebi takes the worst of that collision. Romario scoots so quickly along the ground, a very low center of gravity, and very powerful on the ball as he rode one tackle there. But in the 94 World Cup, wearing the number 10 jersey was Rai, the brother of the great Socrates of the Brazilian teams of the 80s. And Rai still playing with Paris Saint-Germain, but not really in strong consideration in the midfield this time for Brazil. The John Barnes of Brazil, you might say. Great on the club level and a question mark when he puts on the national kit. Hard tackle, play on. And he didn't play that much in 94 either. Tinkler. What a shot that just sails wide and Dita forced to dive to his left. He had the angle covered, but Eric Tinkler, the 27 year old from Barnsley, almost found the back of the net. Again, approach work by South Africa, not bad, but the long range shooting just a bit off target. Brazil still has plenty of players between the ball and their goal. And South Africa has yet to pick apart. That Brazilian defensive setup. Brendan Augustine, Helman Michaleli, Michaleli warming up on the sidelines as they do have a number of players they can put in. In fact, nine substitutes listed for South Africa as they try and give everyone a cap against the world champions. Looks like Michaleli might be the next player to step on the pitch. 2-0 lead for Brazil. The goal in the 11th minute by Romario from Bobeto, and they return the favor in the 38th. Pushing it up the far side. This may be one last run for Willem Jackson, as it appears he might be the player coming out. Nice cut by Dunga. Chance for Zay Maria. The defender tripped up in midfield, and that might just be a card, but at least a talking to. 
Moetti again in the middle, and the yellow card does come out. Actually, the whistle in his hand. And Lucio Sasique is trying to regain some composure in this game. Kamalo having a few words. Same area, and it is a late challenge by the South African midfielder. So some words exchanged after it. To the bottom of the screen, Willem Jackson, the 25-year-old left back, will be stepping off the field. Helma Mikaleli, 28-year-old from Turkey's Kayerispor, will step on, a more offensive player. Redebi will be pushed a little bit to the outside, and Mikaleli will jump into the offensive midfield. Nice return pass, but they have not started play. Have to do it all over again. And Mario responsible for one goal and the assist on the second goal for Brazil in the first half of play in Alice Park in Johannesburg South Africa the South African crowd cheering on Clive Barker's squad the Bafana Bafana the boys if you want to translate it from the Zulu language there Roberto tripped up fish dropping it back The first substitute of the game for South Africa as they try and get Helmut Mikaleli involved. Long ball up front. Masinga has broken free, but an unlucky hop. If that one had slowed down with Dita coming out, Masinga might have had an empty net. And not a bad approach by South Africa. You could see just before that how congested Brazil was in the midfield. So many bodies in midfield. The ball over the top bypassed that congested midfield and nearly broke open a space for Masinga to strike. Moetti, the player who has had a few words from the official about to come off. And number 12, Brendan Augustine, the 26-year-old, plying his trade in Austria in Linz at ISK. Stepping onto the field, Augustine for Moetti. Near side, Zay Roberto. Augustine, a forward. In fact, he has something to prove to Clive Barker. Was not on that African Nations Cup squad because he was in Austria trying out. Typical Brazilian attack there where Danielson had dropped back to collect the ball. Meanwhile, Zay Roberto, the left back, had gone forward of him to actually become the out and out winger. And here's Danielson again dropping back into midfield. And unusual errant pass because the 19 year old is one of the most skillful players to be developed by Brazil over the last few years long ball again for missing and again Dita no problem you can see Aldair patrolling against the big man something that he has been known to do in years past and for the most part successfully tall strong defender is Aldair very tough in the tackle and Brazil may play the Jogo Bonito, but you need a couple guys that can win the ball for you. Dunga does it in midfield. Aldair, one of the hard men at the back for Brazil. Carries two pianos. Near side. The town. Well, they've got enough piano players that no question Brazil does. Headed clear, controlled by Fish. The youngest player ever to wear a South African national team jersey. Now at the age of 24, pressured by Danielson. Looking for help from the official, not there. Champions League action continuing on ESPN. This for our international viewers only. Olympiakos against Rosenberg. Thursday broadcast. Check your local listings for details. That last play for South Africa, that's the furthest we've seen Mark Fish push forward. So South Africa... Trying to create something offensively by pushing a few more players forward, including having one of the midfielders get up closer to Phil Masinga so that he has someone to combine with when the ball's played in. Motown well, waiting for the yellow jerseys to push forward. Dita screaming directions, chipping it high in the air, and at his height, no problem for Dita. Fish just gave up halfway. 
So for, for South Africa, the good news was that Ronaldo would not play today for Brazil because of club commitments with Inter Milan. The bad news is that Bebeto and Romario reunited. And Ronaldo, you kind of know what you've got. He's a very straightforward, explosive, and powerful player. And what we've seen today from Romario and Bebeto is these slashing, jagging runs on diagonals that have torn open the South Africa defense. Masinga in the box, but the whistle blows as they call a foul apparently caught on the push against Zay Roberto. It is amazing after almost 60 minutes he was that wide open in the box, and that might be why. He's that strong also, but the shove detected there by the referee. Michelele is sending that ball in, and that was a pretty good cross. Here's Fish. Near side, Matama, 27-year-old back from Kaiser Chiefs. A blind pass, and no one there doing the running. Far side, Michelele pressures the ball, and it will be a throw-in for South Africa. So Brazil here without their full array of stars still have a commanding control of possession at midfield. Tinkler stripped by Dunga. A few words exchanged between the two. Kamalo has yet to get a solid touch on the ball here in the second half. Kamalo started slowly in the first half, but was involved in some of the more dangerous attacking situations for South Africa. He has great vision and creativity. Nice ball to Zé Roberto. Just keeps it in play the first time. Regardless, it will go out of play. Throw in or goal kick. South Africa will have possession. 58 minutes gone. Zé Roberto. Take a look back. There's Zé Roberto, who has been with Real Madrid, but the latest rumor... But it's almost a done deal that he'll go back to Brazil. In fact, that Real Madrid is looking to sign Savio, who was a member of that Olympic squad in 96 for Brazil. Well, Real might have second thoughts considering the fact that Deportivo La Coronia says they have the first rights to Savio. to Savio, so they might actually hold on to Zé Roberto, who has actually been relatively quiet, a physical force here today, but nowhere near the offensive power that the normal number six is in Roberto Carlos, or his counterpart today in Zé Maria. How is it that it seems that the players' agents are the ones that always end up making all of the extra cash in those controversies of who has rights to what player? The whole story of Ronaldo going from Barcelona to Inter Milan. There's volumes of legal papers still being filed on that transaction. Even though he says that he listens to his agents and what they say is best, it has worked out pretty well for the youngster, I would say. Nice move, far side, Bebeto. Knocking the ball free. And Milan, Inter Milan, that is, the dominant team in Serie A this season. But think about the offensive weaponry that they possess. Not just Ronaldo, but even a guy like Zamorano, who hasn't played much as of late through injury, is a tremendous goal scorer from Chile. Near side. Tovi pushing out as they continue to try and push up in the back. They started with five backs, now down to three. As Matang has moved to the midfield, the shot will roll wide. They did catch Dita wrong-footed, but off target. And the youngster, Brendan Augustine, shot just sails wide. Of course, Scotland, Morocco, and Norway watching very closely here as they will face Brazil in the first round of World Cup 98 in France this summer. The first three victims, as it was termed in the Brazilian press. Nice pass near side. Motown getting to the corner. Gets past Zé Roberto, who sticks in a foot and just parries it across the end line. Good play there by Zé Roberto. But a corner kick upcoming, and you can see a couple of players getting set to loosen up. Really only those four subs, the goalkeeper and three field players. Good look at Dr. Kumalo of Major League Soccer in the United States. Plays in the midfield for the Columbus crew. When he goes back to South Africa on loan, he plays for Kaiser Chiefs. Perhaps the most famous player ever to don a South African jersey. Low cross, almost flicked on, still in play. Kamalo, chip, back post. Tinkler trying to keep it in play and cannot. 
Nelson Mandela, a big fan of the Bafana Bafana, the boys of South Africa. He was there in person when they captured the African Nations Cup in 96. National team supremacy on the continent of Africa after so many years of athletic isolation because of apartheid. Roberto trying to dance his way through the South African defense. Mikaleli finally brings him down and the foul against the South African. Bebeto trying to operate in very tight quarters. In fact, the foul may have been against Bebeto. <laughs> South Africa unlucky to be drawn into the group of the host country France for World Cup 98 and also face Denmark, a traditionally strong European squad and Saudi Arabia who surprised many in 94 with their performance fish on the overlap can he get there no goal kick coming up for Nida and Brazil but South Africa continuing to try and push numbers forward fish was one of the three defenders they had and he pushes forward that time the pass leaving a touch to be desired the lone goals both coming in the first half Romario in the 11th the 38th from Roberto and almost in the 46th, Danielson put a third on the board, but hit the underside of the bar. Here's Bobeto, far side, cuts back against Rodebe. Dunga flicking it outside. Rodebe was supposed to play only 45 minutes because he's nursing a slight groin injury. That was the agreement with his club team back in England, Leeds. George Graham not too happy at the moment. They do get open in the overlap, and Romario might have been denied it looked like Aronsa just got a finger to it or Romario had it skim off the dome I think Romario did get his head to it but not enough to direct it on goal Mark Fish in front of him great little ball here into space little cross from the right side another good run into the six yard box by Romario glancing off of his head out of danger for South Africa Aronsa might have just blinded him enough or even slightly touched it. You could see Fish was keeping an eye on Danielson, which is not a bad idea. And Matang could not keep up with Romario, who worked his way free. Matang very involved defensively here. Normally he gets forward a lot. Rodrigo's header picked up with no problem. This is something like the first half. Remember, you even said it, Phil, that Brazil looked very uninspired and suddenly someone flipped a switch we're still waiting for them to flip the switch here in the second half nice move by Augustine away from pressure lays it near side Masinga it might be a handball against Zay Roberto but the referee says play on everyone comes to a stop and they will call an offside initially so the offside against Masinga before Zay Roberto put a hand to the ball that had the crowd on their feet so it looked that South Africa might gain a penalty kick. Ball played in by the substitute. Flicked on slightly here. There's Masinga. May have hit Masinga's hand, actually. Good call by the officials in that one. Dunga, the great captain for Brazil, as he was in 94 when they won their fourth unprecedented World Cup championship. 65 minutes in the books. 25 more to go. The South Africans flag waving throughout the stands. Romario and Babeto setting up each other in the first half. Phil Shane, Ty Keo with you on ESPN as Brazil tries to add to its tally. Babeto, Romario, the flick, and Dunga could not get there in time. You could see what Romario was thinking. He didn't even have to look. He knew that Dunga was right behind him, trailing the play. Just wanted to try and slow it down and deflect it enough, but maybe could not get enough on it. Touch back by Aldair. Dito will chip it to the near side. And South Africa getting a chance to put some pressure on the Brazilian net. A little bit of sloppy play out of the back by Brazil. Kumalo. Nice turn. Chipped in too far. And the flag coming up anyway as the Brazilian trap has worked to perfection. Michelele whistled on that one. Dida, who plays for Crusader in Brazil, 
Crusado making it to the final of the World Club Championship last week in Tokyo, losing to Dortmund. 2-0. Jovan Karofsky, the USA hopeful for 98 World Cup participation, did appear in that game for Dortmund as a substitute. Danielson, his national team teammate from Sao Paulo, also involved in cup competition. Masinga's header flipped back into the arms. Sao Paulo playing River Plate. Free kick upcoming for South Africa just out in front, and Junior Baiano having a little argument. So Sao Paulo against River Plate in the Super Copa of South America being played this week as well. Danielson missing the first game, of the first leg of the final with a couple of yellow cards in the semifinals. And it could have cost Sao Paulo a chance at the championship as they drew nil-nil at home. In the second match in Buenos Aires next week, Dita better watch out as he realizes he'd left the net open. This could be dangerous territory for Kamalo, who is standing on the left of the ball right now. Mosheo also nearby. A five-man wall in front. Mark Fish set up for a blast, or actually, Looks like that might be Eric Tinkler just in case. One third of the game left to go and still a chance for a late comeback from South Africa. Dita trying to steal the goalkeeping job from Tafaro. The blast deflected to the near side. Matang gets the cross in, headed away. It looked like Aldair got ahead to that one, Babeto. But Tovi back quickly to grab hold. Toby for years, the great captain at the back for Brazil, nearly gives it up here. This is his 50th appearance, a record for a South African player for the South African national team. Trying the skill game against Brazilians might not be the smartest thing for a center back. But Toby, physical enough to win that one free without a foul. Here's a good chance. Back to the middle, deflected up. Looked like Augustine might have been breaking free. Aldair stepping up at the perfect time there in defense for Brazil. Another chance for Romario in the middle. Beautiful layoff by Bobeto. Tovi shadowing him. Bobeto touching it back as he could not control. And a chance for South Africa. Defense has gone out the window as both clubs going end to end. Things opening up at midfield. Hard tackle as Danielson dispossessed. Zé Roberto comes up to pick up the loose ball. Nice chip. Zé Roberto almost split the team. Flip to the outside by Kamalo Mutong has it now. Mutong, normally known for getting forward regularly into the attack, a big part of the South African attack, but he's been so busy defending, we've not seen him that much down the right side, although once or twice some dangerous, dangerous crosses have come in to Masinga, but he's double and triple team. Roberto coming back. Redebi handles it like the crow that he is. Brendan Augustine has already come off the bench. They still have Poland and Lanya and Sean Bartlett available to them if they wish at a forward position. There's Malto right back. Chance. Michelle still in play. Finally deflected near side in the throw-in upcoming for South Africa. Premier League action on ESPN. Check your local listings for details. Sheffield Wednesday against Barnsley, who have had their share of surprises, both positive and negative, in their first year in the top flight. It comes your way Monday on ESPN. ESPN 2 in the States. Masinga might be getting tired. Could not control that throw in, and it's blasted away off Matang, and Zé Roberto awaits the throw. Remember, this is an international friendly. Both teams have the chance to use as many as five substitutes, should they wish. Unfortunately for Brazil, they don't have five substitutes to use. Both of these teams will be involved next week in the Confederations Cup that will be played in Saudi Arabia. A little bit less of their series of friendlies, an actual competition there. Well, Brazil will be in a group with Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Australia. South Africa start off against the Czech Republic, the European champions. South Africa in this competition as the champions of Africa, the African Nations Cup. Uruguay and the United Arab Emirates complete Group B with South Africa and the Czech Republic. Tinkler, Tovey. Fish open on the near side. 
Brazil will also appear in the United States in the Gold Cup competition this coming February. Nice pass. Augustine showing some flash. Here's a chance for Tinkler. Nice little chip into the box. That's Kamalo up there. And a desperation clear by Junior Baiano. Makalele cutting into the box. Dispossessed. Dunga again. Probably the first time we've seen South Africa in the attack with three players in Brazil's penalty area. Touch to the middle. Tovi plays it smart. Mark Fish on the ball of the Bolton Wanderers of the Premier League in England. Previously, he was with Lazio in Serie A in Italy before joining Bolton. Play in the midfield in South Africa holding on. Masinga starting to come into midfield more and Kamalo then taking the space for him up front. Machero doing a nice job, but the final pass intended for Augustine. Tinkler also trying to create out of midfield wearing number 21 for South Africa. Long ball and Redebi still showing a few wheels. You get the feeling Brazil just a little bit on cruise control here. But they could strike at any moment. The singer's pass intended to Augustine. He's tripped up in a free kick. Remember the diabolical duo they have up front in Bebeto and Romario. Brendan Augustine, one of the subs. Lumisa and Gobi getting set to check in the number 22. And Gobi, an offensive midfielder from the Orlando Pirates. And that's like Eric Tinkler might be the player he'll be coming in for, but probably not until after this free kick. Dida still not happy with the wall out in front of him. Brazilian goalkeeper still motioning. You can see Mark Fish is pushed up from the back right at the edge of the 18. Laying it off. Chipped to the back post. The attempted volley loose in the box. And the outside of the right foot shot goes over the bar. Mosheo might have been offside anyway, but another good chance for South Africa. They might respect Brazil, but they're not scared of it. A little bit of creative brilliance also on the set play. Brendan Augustine here. He may, have down. Been, he may have been injured there. I think he, he might be going off. Look at this ball. A dummy run played back in. The chance here misstruck. But right in there. Moshu for South Africa putting it over the bar. He may have been in an offside position. Tinkler is out. Keep an eye on Augustine to see how he does. There you can see the Rodman-like blonde locks. Of Ngovi at the top of the screen. The tackle by Redevi drawing the foul. Romario most recently with Valencia, but problems there. Both on and on the field. Ngovi, the 22 on the right of the screen, actually scored in his national team debut against Kenya. Part of the champions of 95 with the Orlando Pirates, but 96 and into 97 has been somewhat of a disappointment. The long run up, the shot blasts off a of back and out across the end line. It looks like a sub starting to warm up at the bottom of the screen. Gonzalez, who has seen his share of time with the Brazilian national team this year. 31-year-old defender from Botafogo as they continue to try and piece together two center backs, which might be the biggest weakness for a world championship well, team. And historically, Brazil has lacked a goalkeeper of the same caliber of the rest of their squad. And Tafarel was adequate in 94. And he may be called back in again in 98. But even on some of the other world championship teams for Brazil back in 70, Felix was a pretty average goalkeeper. Luckily, he had so much firepower in front of him in Jarzinho and Pelé, Tostal, Rivellino, and Gerson. Nice touch forward, but the offside flag comes up. 
Augustine whistled for the foul. 2-0 Brazil leads it. Let's flash back in the 11th minute. And Ronaldo's not here, but Bebeto is reunited with Romario. Romario being set up by Bebeto there. And here, returning the favor, it was Bebeto scoring on the pass from Romario. That in the 38th minute, so the 2-0 lead. And you can see a couple of substitutes getting set to warm up. Gonsalves coming in for Aldair. Center back for center back. And Doriva now loosening himself on the sideline. Aldair... 76 minutes in the books. The movie star looks. Unfortunately, the problem is sometimes he plays like the statue of Adonis as well as looks like it. But of the players that they have brought in, he has been perhaps the most impressive and could even be a starter. The legend France there, 98. the legend on the sideline for Brazil, Mario Zagallo involved in all of their four World Cup championships, two as a player, one as a head coach, and in 94 as the assistant coach to Carlos Alberto Pereira. Sampaio's pass picked up by Danielson. Low cross, loose in the box, and it'll be intercepted by Ngobi. And the rumor mill about Carlos Alberto Pereira, currently still, we think, the coach for the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars in Major League Soccer, but possibly signing very soon as the World Cup coach to lead Saudi Arabia to France in 98. Second stint with the Saudis for Pereira if it happens. To the outside. Michelele dances past Zay Maria. Not cleared by Junior Baiano. Flipped back. Gonzalez stops. And the opportunistic tip in. It is now 2-1. South Africa has equalized, capitalizing Michelele, tucking it past Dita. The mistake by Brazil comes back to haunt them. Dita facing up to the Bafana Bafana, in the Zulu language, the boys. And South Africa back in this match Good work out on the left side for South Africa. A cross coming in. It's flicked then. And McLeary started the play, and he finishes it, just getting his toe to it. A great run to play it in. Great battling. And he comes all the way in to finish it off himself, McLeary. Bayano against the diminutive Brendan Augustine, who actually forced the ball free in the Substitute still cold off the bench. Perhaps Gonzalez cannot control it, and Michelele does not give him a second chance. Fourth goal for South Africa for Michelele, and what a big one here today. His run down the left side really opened it up and started the entire play. And you mentioned Augustine battling very well for a small player to win the head ball in the box to get it back into Michelele. And Now we've got a two-to-one game. Zagallo doesn't appear overly concerned but this should improve the level of play because Brazil had really gotten stuck on cruise control as we mentioned a few minutes ago. Michelele used to winning part of that Orlando Pirates Cup winning side and also the African Nations Cup and showing some opportunistic skill. The second half substitute getting on the scoreboard and with 10 minutes to go remember Brazil came back a 2-0 deficit and um, believe me South Africa remembers it was all that Aronsa could really talk about the South African keeper heading into this game Masinga stepped on by Dunga play on Michelele chipping to the middle but no one home Clive Barker the head coach you can see the pulse rate starting to pick up and plenty of reason to smile as his boys have impressed on the world stage this might not be the full squad for Brazil, but enough of them are out there, and considering some of the substitutes happen to have some World Cup hardware at home, nothing to be ashamed about. But the two substitutes for South Africa today just combined on that goal to make this game reachable for the Bafana Bafana. Nikolele, great run down that left side. He had come on as a sub, and Brendan Augustine who previously served some dangerous crosses from that far left side into Masinga after having come off as a substitute. Here's Danielson, similar to what makes Ronaldo so great, the change of pace and the pace 
to blow past once you have the defense frozen. Two of the biggest weapons in his arsenal. Fish stepping forward to calmly clear the area. Moeshu. They also have that close control of the ball to go with it. Nice cut by Augustine. Ngobe. The crowd into it now. Nicolelli steps over and holds on to possession. Ngobe touching it back. Nice effort. Masinga stepping into position in the center. Uses his frame to force the ball free, but perhaps too hard, and it might be an unfortunate call there. Retaliates with a push as Dunga is. He's a little bit harder to put down than that. One of the toughest defensive midfielders in the world, Dunga. And Masinga does go in the book for his retaliation. But this is not the first time that Dunga has well, instigated. Yeah, exactly. Dunga went looking for it. And got it. Masinga obliged him. Not a smart play, really, by Masinga. Who was hit pretty hard here on a tackle that was, for the most part, from behind by Junior Baiano. Baiano, a very physical player at the back for Brazil. In the first half, he may have got away with a shove in the penalty area. Masinga gets the yellow card for shoving shoving Dunga down to the turf. Deriva, who we saw warming up for Brazil, has come on the field. And Bebeto, the goal scorer, the man who set up the first goal to Romario, stepping off after 83 minutes. At 33 years of age, does he still have it? For another World Cup for Brazil. Well, does he? He sure showed it in the first half. Masinga, by the way, actually took some time off from the national team a few months ago. Now fighting his way back for time and a big part of their World Cup qualifying success. Continues to try and run through Gonçalves. Third try, the charm. Masinga, the tall man up front for South Africa. Provided four critical goals in World Cup qualifying to get South Africa into the French World Cup in 98, including the all-important 1-0 victory against Congo, where he struck from about 35 yards out. So Masinga also a threat from way outside with shooting power. Kamalo looking to set this one up as they caught a handball on Gonsalves. Legalo looking on. We are one header away from being tied up. To the corner, kept in play, sent back to the middle. Dita plays his line, knocked loose, bicycle! Oh. And it hit Bayano in the forehead and cleared away. That was going. Brendan Augustine, the 26-year-old from Linz, Austria, has been a spark plug since entering the field as a second-half sub, and he almost equalized with a touch of Brazilian flair. What a marvelous story this South African team has been for the people of South Africa. Gonsalves heading it clear. A unifying function for them winning the African Nations Cup. Onside. Natal tries to get the cross in, and Zé Roberto parries it away. The people have embraced this biracial team, something that would have been unheard of in those decades of sports isolation that South Africa suffered because of their apartheid policies. It's a Cinderella story now. They won the African Nations Cup last year. Now they've qualified for France for their first World Cup ever. Danielson getting set to restart play. Phil Shane, Ty Keo with you on ESPN. The Nike Brazil World Tour continuing in Johannesburg. The first two goals for Brazil and the capitalistic goal, you might say, for Mikaleli. It's 2-1. Dunga. Looked like he might have caught the wrong end of a boot from Ngobi. And also the veteran that he is letting a little time wind down. Dunga, 34 years of age, at the heart of the midfield for Brazil. Zagallo looking on. Danielson trying to pressure here. Tackle there by Dunga in typical fashion. He actually took a stronger hit to the back of his head, in fact. Mosheu. Giving Dunga perhaps a touch of payback, although it looked unintentional. And Dunga, in his normal fashion, studs up on the first tackle. And Musheo coming then and piling on top of him from behind. 
Dunga making the big bucks in the Japanese League, the J League, as so many Brazilians have done over the last several years. It's good to see Leonardo come back from Japan and join AC Milan. Good play by Rocheu today. As he steps off the field, four minutes left to go. They'll toss in a forward, take out a midfielder. Poland and Lanya, 27-year-old from Versaspor. One of the three South African national team members to play their professional ball in Turkey. And because this is an international friendly, five substitutes allowed per team. Brazil has just used two of theirs. But they don't even have five players on the bench. Only one more field player, Russo, the number 13 left to go. So Brazil, for all their depth, really did not bring it to this particular contest. Cafu with obligations with Roma. Also missing Roberto Carlos because of obligations with Real Madrid. Emerson with Leverkusen. Juninho with Atletico Madrid. And that was a last minute thing. We really thought Juninho would be here for Brazil today. And of course the great Ronaldo. Considering the fact that Juninho went to Spain to get called up to the national team. It is a little surprising. Here's a chance again for South Africa. Brendan Augustine the chip. Humalo switching fields nicely. Mikaleli the goal scorer. Mikaleli lays it through. Kumalo slows down. Oh, a slam in the back. Perhaps unintentional as he lost his footing, but he held up a second and then tried to pick up the pace and then slammed into the back of Zay Roberto. Could have been a knee to the thigh, to the backside of the thigh of Zay Roberto. You could see if Kamalo had kept on moving, Mikaleli's pass would have been right on stride and Perhaps in an effort to make up for that. A touch too hard, but Zé Roberto back up in the long ball. Intercepted by Tobin. What about the show that Ronaldo put in for a world audience in the FIFA World All-Star game held just before the World Cup draw earlier this week? He had a foot in all five goals for the rest of the world squad, which was victorious against the European All-Stars. Here's Masinga. Chip to the middle. Augustine hacked in the back. Comes up limping. Zé Roberto touching it to the middle. Tovey wins it for South Africa. Back to the middle. Here's Motown looking to cross. Gonsalves comes in. Dropping it back. Masinga could not touch it. And it's cleared back to midfield with a minute left to go. Regardless of the way this one ends, we've seen some good play from some Brazilians we have not seen wearing the uniform in a while. And some heartening play from South Africa. Clive Barker, the South African coach, really looking to build some confidence. This will be the first World Cup ever for the South Africans. And they've got the upcoming Confederations Cup that we mentioned, all part of the building process for this country that was not a part of the soccer playing world for so many decades. Matang again, a disappointing service. Coming up in mere moments, look at the highlights of today's game and the final substitute as Russo will pick up his first cap. Dunga down again. Well, there will be some injury time added on, no question, giving a chance to South Africa to try and tie this match. We talked about some players who had not worn the Brazilian uniform for a while. Dunga has already made his way back as a regular player on the national team. Romario has now entered the fray. Would it be beyond the doubt that Bebeto can become an integral part of the 98 team? His performance was very convincing in the first half of this match, combining so well with Romario up front. Of course, you have to throw into that equation, though, Ronaldo, who has certainly come onto the stage, burst onto the stage. He was a part of the Brazilian squad in 94 as a very young player, but did not appear in any of the matches. In fact, Carlos Alberto Pereira was under a great deal of criticism for not using Ronaldo at that time. Dunga, a smile and a few words of advice. Ronaldo, of course, was only 17 years of age Russo. at the World Cup in 94. Of course, Pelé was 15. 
Pelé was 17 also at his first World Cup in 1958. Scoring and 15 when he wore his first. Exactly, first time he wore the Brazil jersey. But he scored two goals in the World Cup final of 58, which is a very important World Cup to consider because this is the only time that any South American team or power was able to win a World Cup on European soil. And Europe has never done it on South American soil, so. Or in Mexico. You can understand why Germany and France might be the favorites. They'll give Augustine the benefit of the doubt. Motong had the chance for the first time service. Again, lofts it straight to the arms of Dita. Still a little work to be done by the South Africans, but for a team that was dominated by players like Dr. Kumalo, Augustine and Masinga now showing some flair, and it looks like the young crop of Clive Barker's stars there's might no, be making a Exactly. Statement. There's no question there's a bevy of individual talent with the South Africa squad. What they are are relatively new on the world stage of soccer, and it takes a while to kind of find that level of competitiveness, and games like this will certainly help South Africa's confidence in that regard. Two minutes of added time already in the books as Masinga in a desperate slide, unsuccessful. Brazilian flags waving in the stands. Russo whistled for a foul. Fish pushing up. South Africa knows not much time left. Overall, a disappointing performance by the Brazilian attack in the second half of play. They knew they had the two goals in the back pocket. Now they did give one up here in the late going to make things a little more exciting. And South Africa not able to really press home and create dangerous chances after having cut the score line in half. Dunga did go down a couple of times in the late going, and there has been significant injury time at it. Dita across midfield. Rodrigo still out there, perhaps a chance to impress one more time. To Nielsen outside of the foot, and he flicks it across. Rodrigo. Oh. Right grab by Aronsa, but another beautiful pass by Danielson made it look effortless. Danielson wielding that left foot like a paintbrush as he stroked it right into the run of the supporting attacker. You mentioned how the Brazilians known for the Jogo Bonito, the beautiful game, and their caressing of the ball. Kumalo has three and a half minutes ticking down. Into the middle, flicks towards the goal, but why? So not much design to those balls. They're just sending balls willy-nilly into the box, hoping for a bounce in their favor. South Africa to be able to tie this game. Worked in their first goal. Because of Augustine, he's on the ball there. He won the header and got it back into the path of Mekalele for South Africa's goal. The captain, Rodebi. As you said, only supposed to play a half, and George Graham probably tearing what's left of his hair out in leads. He's put in, Davies now put in uh, more than 94 minutes. All eyes on the official in the middle, and that time, not a bad place to look because he stops the ball away from a pass. The foul is called. All right, bring Roberto Carlos <laughs> from the airport. Let him take this one. And Gobe taking down to Nielsen. Romario maybe going for one more. Four goals already in the Nike World Tour. Danielson maneuvering well. He's impressed Mario Zagallo over the last several months. Enough to be wearing that number 10 jersey, that fabled number 10 jersey for our Brazil. Danielson looks a little bit like Del Piero at times when he's working down that left side and taking players on. Del Piero, the, the great attacking and creative player for the Italian national team. Aronsa anxiously dancing on the line. Zay Maria and Romario. Never satisfied, especially when you get a chance for glory. You have to be a little bit greedy to be a goal scorer. Romario did that in 94. Zay Maria, oh, what a save by Aronsa. He bent it around the four-man wall. You can see Aronsa not happy with the way the wall had lined up, and Zay Maria just pummeled that ball and almost tucked it into the net. Romario tied for third in goal scoring at the 94 World Cup with Roberto Baggio, with Jurgen Klinsmann and Kenneth Anderson of Sweden. Five goals in that World Cup for Romario. Five and a half minutes plus of added time. The corner kick. Romario 
keeps it in play. Fish coming over slowly. Romario, Romario! Good idea, but it sails wide. Almost went out for a throw-in. And that will do it. The whistle has blown in South Africa. Nothing to be ashamed of, but one goal shy of the world champions. Romario, Bobeto, scoring for Brazil in the first half to put Mario Zagallo's squad up 2-0. Mikaleli comes up with the opportunistic goal in the second half, making the final 2-1. And Brazil really put on a show offensively in the first half of play. Bebeto on the through ball to Romario, who lifts it over the on-rushing goalkeeper. Bebeto returns the favor, a heel pass to Bebeto, who fights through a little bit of adversity and then finds the far corner. Another chance here. Romario here just about getting to it. Danielson hits the crossbar, or it would have been 3-0 for Brazil at that time. And South Africa made a comeback, though, and put the pressure on. McAuley on the cross and it's driven down and just not enough for South Africa to come back into the game. For Ty Keo, I'm Phil Shane. The final score from Johannesburg, 2-1 Brazil.